Esther, who is their set piece taker and the drink stirrer for the cards. We are underway at Dr. Mark and Cindy Lynn Stadium on the campus of the University of Louisville. The visiting Seminoles wearing gold jerseys tonight with the garnet letters. And Louisville will be wearing their pink jerseys tonight with the white letters and numbers. And right away, Florida State going left to right on your screen and on the attack. And they win a corner within the first 30 seconds. You know this is going to be a team that wants to be dominant in possession, 60-40 this season in possession. Last time out, they were up at 75% possession against Miami, 22 to nothing in shots. And as the corner is delivered in and skipped up and over, that was Matty Ellsworth for Louisville winning the defensive header. And we'll have the whole proceedings repeat themselves on the other side. Yeah, it was a nice win there by Ellsworth on that back post. I don't think if she doesn't get a touch to that, I think that one might end up in the back of the net. There was a Florida player, a Florida State player right there on the back post ready to head that one in. So Ellsworth making the, the, the saving header on that one. They'll have to be defensively strong on this set piece. The ACC leader in assists, Huff on the corner. Taylor Huff chasing it down again, but Louisville's gonna clear it away for a throw. On this right-hand side, a little bit of a shift for FSU tonight. And Brian Penske, the head coach here for the Seminoles, as their back line starting out without Heather Gilchrist. Gilchrist had been the regular center back alongside Lauren Flynn. And Mimi Van Zenten, who scored the game-winning goal, her first collegiate goal or excuse me, the game tying goal. There's Brian Penske against North Carolina is out at left back. Ron EY is shifting over to right back, normally the left back for FSU. And Sophia Wynn has pinched inside at center back. It's Louisville having to defend in the early stages. This is Jody Brown, the Jamaican national team member, went to the World Cup. The reggae girls. There's EY on the throw. And Casey, if you're Louisville, obviously, coming into this game, knowing how difficult it has been against the Florida States and North Carolinas of the world, you get a look at Karen Ferguson Days looking on. What's that early part of the game like for teams hosting, knowing the attacking talent that's coming at them? Well, like you said, you know it's going to be a, a tough game, and I think it's all about getting the confidence in your play, getting that first good touch, that first successful pass, making a nice move, building your confidence in the game because you, you know you're going to be defending a lot. You know you're not going to get to see the ball a lot, so making sure that you're staying confident, building that so when you do get your opportunities, you're ready to take them. 24 years at the helm, Karen Ferguson days. She has seen it all coaching the Louisville Cardinals. Former player herself on the national team, was a superstar at UConn. Has seen Louisville in a handful of conferences. As the Cards trying to break out, Eddie Chester unable to corral the clearance there. And Casey, Florida State coming in here. They haven't lost this season, 8-0-1. 5-0 oh, and 1 on the road. What do you think is the uh, keys for them tonight? So for uh, Florida State, they got to have possession with a purpose. They're going to see a lot of the, the ball in the game today because Louisville will be comfortable with sitting in defensively and keeping the play in front of them. So FSU needs to make sure that they're moving the ball around, but trying to break the lines, looking to exploit the spaces in behind. And the other one, start strong. They've had a solid, se a particularly strong season so far. They're undefeated, uh, but they have done really well in the second half. They've outscored their opponents 19 to three, whereas in the first half, it's just seven to six. So tonight they need to see if they can be a little bit more consistent in the first half and see if they can get a few goals in the first half. Our first look at this electric trio up front as Jody Brown in behind, right footed ball in, and it's off the line, cleared away by Louisville. 
What a nice clear there. I believe that was Carson Cherry clearing the ball off the line, which was going to be a surely a goal by Florida State with two runners at the back post. A nice play there from Cherry. It was B Brown and Dudley almost able to connect there. A Dudley probably wasn't expecting the ball to get through. Electric freshman second in the ACC already in goals scored. Scored twice against Miami in a 2-0 win. Florida State, a team that will dominate possession. Now shifting out to this left-hand side. This is Huff looking into the middle to Olsen. Just wide from Beata Olsen, the Swede. So here we're going to get another look. There's Jody Brown making the run. A nice little slipped ball. And again, I think Dudley overran it ever so slightly, but a great save from Carson Cherry. And here's the one that just happened. A good ball out wide. Nice service. Olsen does well to get to it. Just a difficult angle to be able to score from that sort of angle. But Florida State knocking at the door. They're doing very well with getting a lot of numbers forward and attacking quickly. Olsen, of course, no slouch herself. 30 career goals. The Transfer over from Florida, has three goals this season. This is Brown trying to drive through the middle. Here's Dudley. Good defending coming back from Fiona Geyser. And then Raven Alexander, the veteran leader of this Louisville Cardinals squad, wins the throw. And that's the type of player that Karen Ferguson Days is going to rely on tonight. The Raven Alexanders of this team seen so much in this ACC. It's going to be all about the, the fight for the cards and making sure that when they do get their opportunities, when they do have time on the ball, that they're, they're taking care of it, they're connecting their passes. Because again, Florida State will dominate possession. That's no surprise. That's how they like to play. That's just the caliber of team that they are. So Louisville needs to make sure that when they are able to turn the ball over, that they're connecting to the middle of the field. They're attacking as a team and transitioning quickly. Let's talk about Louisville's keys tonight, Casey. So tonight, Louisville has to be tight defensively. We've talked about it. We've seen a lot of it already in these first few minutes. It's going to be a big test for them. So they have to make sure that they're staying tight defensively and not leaving any easy gaps for Florida State to play into. As Olsen gets in there and is cut off. And the other one, sharp on set pieces. They're, Florida State's a difficult team to score on, so they need to make sure that they capitalize on any opportunities that they do get to have looks on target, and a lot of those come through set pieces, especially in the final third. So Louisville's going to have to see if they can get in those uh, those places on the field to have solid looks on set pieces. Out on the left side, this is Chester. Win giving chase. And Chester wins the corner for Louisville. <laughs> Addie Chester, the set piece taker for the cards this season. Impressive sophomore. Is the focal point of this Louisville attack. Tends to look back posts. Yeah, but here comes that first opportunity of a, of a set piece. This is the perfect chance to get an early goal on Florida State. Right footed delivery. And the first one to it is the goalkeeper for Florida State, Christina Roque. Shuffled back in by Alexander. And I believe it's going to be another corner. It is. And here it's a nice ball in, but Roque does really well to come out and punch that one to safety. She doesn't really have to make a lot of saves during the game, but when her name has been called in matches, she's come up big, and she's got a whole sea of pink around her right now. Preseason all ACC selection, Roque. Second time through on the corner, this time comfortably cleared by Florida State. Emerson Jennings giving chase. Alexander on the recycled cross. And this is where Florida State can be dangerous on the break. And the Seminoles instead keeping possession on the far side. Your referees tonight. In the middle is Leland Grant leading the proceedings. Aaron Rollins and Carlos Oliva are your assistant referees or linesmen, depending on who you ask. And the fourth official is Caleb Riley, 
who will have to do his best with the coaches barking at him from both <laughs> benches. Savina Zamborini winning the ball momentarily for Louisville, but it's won back by Florida State. Here comes Jody Brown. Brown still driving through the midfield. Huff cut off by Ellsworth. Florida State is just so quick when they're able to pick the ball up in transition moments like that and not afraid to dribble at the back line. Brown does so well there to run at the back line, force a defender to commit to her. They just could not connect on that last pass. It's a piece opportunity coming for Florida State as Taylor Huff is going to head over, the junior from Mansfield, Ohio, a under-23 player at the U.S. Youth, na youth National Team. Scored the game-winning goal against Texas A&M and a thriller to start the season as the rain continues to drive down here in Louisville. The wind in the direction of Louisville's defensive goal here. Huff. And the header was won there by Raven Alexander. It's going to be a corner for Florida State. It's a great service into the back post. Alexander does really well to deal with it. Here we'll get another look at that ball. Really nicely placed on that back post. Looking to, to find, I believe it was Flynn there on the back post to connect with. Uh, but again, Florida State has just been knocking at the door, trying to break through that scoring sheet. The fourth corner already of the game for FSU. Combined sixth as Huff plays it back post. Nodded back into the direction of the frame, but out for a goal kick. Aaron Floyd in goal tonight for Louisville, part of this impressive crew of sophomores. Floyd won the job last year and came into this year. Karen Ferguson Day is saying, look, it's, a, it's an open competition at goalkeeper. And Floyd won it again this year and has the experience, obviously, of playing in the ACC. And I think she's been very good for the cards. She's had some really critical moments that has kept the cards in games, kept them alive, and has really done well. And I keep thinking about that Virginia game. Always a yes. good team, Virginia and Louisville. If you're into expected goals, Louisville <laughs> won the XG battle and felt hard done by the 1-1 draw. Couple of opportunities to get a second. And the Cavs held him off. Here's a takeaway. Chester was looking for Geyser on the far side. Emerson Jennings was in the area too. And that's going to be a key matchup here. Dudley and Ellsworth. Dudley already considered a big time prospect among pro teams. Just a freshman. She's just been so good offensively, and she gives them, she's she's smart on the ball, she's got size, she's strong, she's tall, she's good in the air. She just kind of ticks all the boxes, and, and as a freshman, I feel like she just keeps getting better and better each game. Penske continuing to shapeshift his team in terms of its setup. Today playing a 4-4-2 with two forwards central with Olsen and Dudley. Dudley started the season out wide. And then Echeghini can play out wide, and tonight she's playing in more of a 10 role for the Seminoles. Here's Zamborini. Right through the middle. Now Jody Brown working with Leilani Nesbeth, but it was cut off again here from Louisville. When Louisville's able to get set in their defensive shape, they have been so difficult to break down. When they're off playing offense, it's going to look like that 3-4-3, but defensively, it's going to look more like a five-back with having Alexander and Huckabee dropping back in to kind of fill some spaces out there on the wings. It's going to allow them to be able to deal with the front three of Florida State a little bit better, and that defensive shape is just so solid. State comfortable in possession. Well, this season, three shutouts. 
That is a tall order tonight, asking for a clean sheet against a Florida State team that has just pelted in the goals as usual. Their last five games alone, they're at 13 goals and 12 in their last four, including three comebacks in that span here as Emerson Jennings trying to find Geyser is cut off by Nesbeth. Louisville's doing really good of keeping the play in front of them. They're forcing Florida State to have to play across the back line. And the minute that Florida State tries to break those lines, they're intercepting that pass or they're applying a lot of pressure. Louisville's perfectly fine if Florida State just passes it across their center backs all night long. They are totally okay with that. So Florida State needs to see if they can have a little bit more movement in their midfield players and their front players to try to find those gaps and see if they can break down that shape of Louisville. Cards 1-0 oh, and 2 in their last three home games, including a win over Pitt as this ball is played over top looking for Dudley. Raven Alexander in there defensively. Dudley. Locked away in another corner coming for FSU. Really good defending there by Alexander and good secondary defending by Maddie Ellsworth. She didn't just leave Raven out there on an island. She came over and was being the coverage. So if Dudley was able to beat Alexander, then Ellsworth was right there to get that second ball, to get to intercept the pass there. But Florida State, again, their last corner kick from this side, a little bit too far on the service. Maybe they can sharpen it up a little bit and see if they can hit that back post. A cluster of bodies on that back post played in and won nicely there by Maddie Ellsworth. And that's an important header for Ellsworth. Ellsworth was the third center back coming into the season and Karen Ferguson Days saying she's just too helpful for us to keep her off the field. I kept trying to find ways to get her in. Well, that's twice now that she's had kind of a saving header there on the back post, or else it would have been a nice, easy header in for Van Zanten on that back post. Oregon State transfer. Here's the delivery again from Huff. A game of corners so far, back post. And this time it's going to run out for a goal kick. I think Nesbeth was the last one on it. Just a little too much air under it. It allowed a lot of time for Louisville to be able to adjust, and it made it difficult for the teammates to be able to get power on that header when you put that much air underneath it. You almost need to drive the ball so it's easier to redirect the ball on target. As we go along here in the next couple of minutes, we are expected to be joined by the captain of Racing Louisville, the NWSL, Jalen Howell, who played at Florida State, won a couple national championships. Excited about that, it'll be in a couple minutes. Jalen, part of a young Racing Louisville squad, the first top tier professional sports team in this city and in this state in about 50 years as Jennings wins the ball back in a dangerous spot. This is Haley Howard. She will hit it from here and it's just wide. Roque did look like she had it covered. But what a good effort there from Emerson Jennings to turn that ball over in the middle of the field. It's a nice layoff to Howard and here we're getting a look of it just purely battling on the ball a good little layoff to Haley Howard who has time and space I don't mind this shot from distance you have to see if you can challenge Roque a little bit see if you can get a shot on target I just don't think she makes the right contact on the ball for it to really be a threatening look on target corner coming or excuse me the goal kick coming for Florida State Got a chance to build again about 20 minutes in, it's scoreless here in Louisville. One team in pink, Florida State in gold here tonight. As the rain is expected to be persistent throughout this game. Here's Echigini on the far side. 
Nigerian national team member. Good pass through, but it was cleared away by Carson Cherry. Louisville seemingly having an answer to all of Florida State's attacks so far. Florida State needs to see if they can try to find a way to break in behind to release Dudley to give her the ball in some space. A foul one there by Leilani Nesbeth. Fiona Geyser, the Bayern Munich youth product. Out wide, here's Echegini. Met by Zamborini, and Zamborini won it off of her. And this is a chance now for Louisville as Chester could not quite get it past. Mimi Van Zanten, but it will be a set piece coming for Louisville. As we have passed the 20 minute mark here into this first half. And as promised, we've got a special guest joining us. One Jalen Howell, the two time Mac Herman Trophy winner in college, a Florida State Seminole, pr loud and proud. How are you, Jalen? Hey, Jeff, I'm good, how are you? We are, we are splendid now that you're here. <laughs> What's it like uh, seeing your alma mater here in town? Oh my gosh, it is so fun seeing them. I'm not old enough yet to where I don't know anybody, so <laughs> that's the exciting part. I actually know a lot of the girls still, a lot of the staff, so. I was able to go to the hotel before the game, see a lot of them catch up, and um, I'm so excited to, to watch them play. And it's got to be a, a cool opportunity to see this other great facility. As, as you know, Racing Louisville it itself has wonderful facilities, but this also is one of the nicest parks that they've got in college soccer. Yeah, this park is amazing. Um, anytime I came, came here and played, it was always great to, to play on this pitch. It's a nice field, great stadium. so. Um, it's awesome watching the girls come back and play here. And uh, honestly, it's a little weird for me. I didn't know <laughs> I'd be here watching the girls back in Louisville, but here we are, and I'm loving every second of it. Casey, what do you got? Well, I just think I know, like coming back and uh, getting to watch your team play that she played college with. It is really weird. What are your thoughts on their season so far? They've had a really strong start. Yeah, I love watching them play So I love the way they keep the ball, the way they can swing it, the way they can make other teams move. I also love um, the threats that they have in behind with Jody and Jordan and Beata. I think it's super fun to watch them and how dynamic they are. And I think that's what you know makes Florida State so good is our ability to be able to do both, uh, be a little direct, but also keep the ball as well. So. Uh, you know, it's, it is weird for me, like you said, watching and be on the sideline, but uh, they have a, a lot of talent, a lot of potential still, still early in the season. So I think they have a lot more growing to do as well, but they're on the right track. As Louisville here trying to get an attack going through, Betsy Huckabee was blocked away. And now Echegini leading the charger. She's got Dudley ahead. Dudley down this left flank. She's got so much speed, fires! And it was blocked away for a corner. Jalen, I, I, I gotta ask you about Jordan Dudley. This kid is phenomenal coming right in and having the impact that she's had as a freshman at Florida State of all places. It's amazing. Um, the first time I watched her, I, I knew she was a special player. And just the way she moves off the ball, how smart she is, and honestly how calm she is for a freshman. It's really not common to see and to be able to come into a program like Florida State and into the college game your first year and have the impact that she has. It's kind of unheard of. So. For me, it's just been uh, awesome being able to watch her and see what she's able to do for the team. And I think the sky's the limit for, for her and for um, you know how many goals she can score because I just see how clinical she is at finishing. That's the first thing that stands out to me. So uh, I'm excited to watch her play. Well, Jalen, will leave you with this one here. You got a big one tomorrow night against Orlando, racing Louisville at Lynn Family Stadium, the last regular season home game. And I think we're all hoping that there's more games coming up, but what can you tell us about this matchup and what you're looking forward to tomorrow night? Yeah, it's a super important match for us. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, playoffs on the line, we need to win. And we know that, we know that we need the three points. Uh, you know, Orlando also needs the three points, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be a battle, but um, we're gonna come out and work hard for each other. 
um, you know, remember what got us to this point. And, uh, you know, I, I think that we have a really good chance, and I'm super excited to see what our, our team is able to do and hopefully make uh, playoffs for the first time in, in racing history. And I really think we have the team to do that. Well, we appreciate all you guys are doing for soccer in this city. It's great to have you out here at another wonderful facility in this city. And I know Louisville fans are happy to have you here. Even if you're wearing your Florida State gear tonight, <laughs> they're happy to have you. I had to. I had <laughs> of to. Of course, of you course. You have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll let it slide. It's fine. Sorry, guys. Yeah. You're I'll okay. wear the purple, but I, I got to wear the garnet when they're in town. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, Jalen Howell from Racing Louisville, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you as always. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Jalen. It's a great opportunity having a top-tier pro team here in town. You get their colleges rolling through. And now that they're all in the NWSL, they get to come see their teams play. As Louisville and Florida State still scoreless 25 minutes into this one. Jalen's not nervous, though. She seems like she's she's good she's with so Florida State. She's so calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> and it's just, I wish I could be that calm, cool, and collected all the time. And she did play on this field for the Seminoles a couple of years ago, as she mentioned. I remember us uh, calling her game and That's talking right. about her being one of the top draft picks yep. in the NWSL draft, and that's exactly what happened. And racing Louisville, really fortunate to be able to pick her up. Emily Madrill was on that team. That was a year after, I believe, that Amina Ekic had moved on mm -hmm. from Louisville. Yes. Of course, Amina also on racing Louisville. She uh, is not here tonight, but had planned to come this weekend and promised us that she would come chat with us. So we may catch up with Amina on Sunday for those Louisville fans hankering for some hometown love. And Carson Pickett also on Racing Louisville, a Florida State product. So the ACC well represented, not only just at racing, but of course also in the NWSL as a whole as Jody Brown is free here down this right flank. Cutting back inside, was looking for Olsen. And cut off. Louisville so far not having to do a ton of work defensively. I want to say Louisville's going to be very pleased with how this half has gone so far, being able to contain Florida State to really limit them to only four shots, two of those shots on goal. I think they're going to be very pleased with that and also being able to have two shots themselves so far this match. Florida State, I think, going to be a little frustrated at their production offensively, just not being able to be on the same page with some of the passes, having a missed touch like just in that instance. I don't think they'll be as pleased with the first half as Louisville will be. Raven Alexander on this near side. A sliding challenge in from Jennings, who's put in quite the shift here, but FSU quick here. Olsen trying to get a foot on it, cleared away by Carson Cherry. It just seems as though the ball keeps getting just stuck underneath their feet. The pass is a little bit behind him. And here we'll get a, another look at that look from Beata Olsen there. It's a nice little through ball, but her touch just goes backwards, not where she needed to go. And also, Louisville does really well to drop three defenders around her to swarm her and not make it easy for her to have a look on target. Jennings and Echikini battling here in the attacking third for Florida State. Defensive third, of course, for Louisville. Louisville a chance to break here through Addie Chester. And Savina Zamberini is cut off though. And now Florida State back in possession through Brown. Olsen down this left flank and Carson Cherry coming across to clean it up. On well, Jordan Dudley having to drop back a little bit to get on the ball more. They have not been able to find her. She plays a nice through ball to Olsen, but again, really good defensive effort from the cards. Right side now to EY from Mitaka City, Japan. And typically the left back, as we mentioned earlier, making her 68th appearance for Florida State. And I 
thought this was interesting about EY. Brian Penske was talking about her earlier this year and said, out on that left-hand side, Florida State had been working through the right flank a lot. So much talent down that right side. And EY looked at her coach one day in training and said, hey, you got to give me the ball a little bit more. <laughs> And Florida State has been working hard to balance out their attack to both sides as they've got another opportunity here. And now EY, ironically, on the right side tonight. Cross played in, cleared away by Cherry. Dudley from distance and got underneath it a little too much. You gotta love the confidence of a player to sit there and be able to say that to the coach, to have the ability to be comfortable enough to say that to their coach. A couple substitutions coming on for both teams. Jennings is going to check out after a pretty strong first half. Howard also checking out along with Addie Chester. Full sail line change in for both teams. Geigley coming on for Louisville along with Morgan Bentley. And Emma Hescock also on the field now for the Cards. And for Florida State, Leah Pace, Maria Alagoa, and Lily Farkas all on the field now for the Knowles. When I truly believe one of the advantages of playing in weather like this, playing in the rain, is as a player, you feel like you can go all match. It's You don't get as tired as easily as you would in if it weren't raining right now. I think the rain just kind of, I, I don't know, it's like the magic factor of the rain. So, I mean, that's why I think both coaches able to wait so long into the first half before having to make changes because the players just were really playing well both teams doing what they needed to do. Neither team looking tired so far in the game. And it's fun to slide in, too. It is so much fun. <laughs> I always liked playing in uh, rainy games. I just remember as a high school kid in October and November when it was raining, it was really cold out. That was not as much fun. No, no, it and has it to at least be somewhat warm. Yes. This is this is nice playing weather though for, <laughs> for rain weather. We are happy with the way this evening has played out. It's relatively warm here in Louisville. Right around the high 60s, low 70s. The weather has been beautiful the last few weeks. As fall creeps in, Halloween fast approaching. And Louisville trying to create spooky season here tonight for the visiting Florida State. The Seminoles still hunting for their first goal in a nothing-nothing draw here as Louisville now in possession. Zamborini has been excellent this season. And back to Aaron Floyd. Zamborini went to high school across the street from the University of Louisville. At DuPont Manual, which produced Amina Ekich, the Whitfield sisters. The Whitfield sisters, yeah, we both were there too. Zamborini scored a great goal earlier this year to crack the seal between her and Raven Alexander. Alexander scored the first goal of the season, and Zamborini scored the first goal for UofL at Lynn Stadium. as Casey said, happy to sit back and defend here a little bit. As Florida State tries to work the Rubik's Cube. A sophomore win looking around, still working with EY. And that's a heavy challenge there from Alexander late in on Leah Pace. Bit unfortunate, I think, if Alexander comes maybe a little bit softer, I think the cards are going to be able to keep possession here because, as you see, it's a poor touch there, and Alexander just takes Pace out there. Pace, the senior from Ontario, a transfer from the University of Pittsburgh. 23 career goals, 14 assists to go with it. That's a great touch through the middle now. Here comes EY. Pace on the ball has Jody Brown calling for it out 
In the middle of the field, instead it's Dudley. Trying to slot it through for pace. Dudley just trying to force it a little bit too much there. There's three defenders right there. I'd like to see maybe take a touch or two more, commit a defender before trying to slip it or have a go herself. Evan had to say, Roberts' name very much tonight. She got a touch on that. Lucy Roberts, just enough to push Jody Brown wide as two more substitutions come on. Caitlin Zippe for Jody Brown. And for Louisville, it's gonna be Molly Cochran, the freshman coming on. For Geyser, Molly Cochran. Before the season started, I love this Quote, it, it is a little <laughs> bit of a coach's phrase, but Karen Ferguson Day is saying that Cochran can, quote, shoot the leather off the ball. And we just needed to work with her on some seasoning as a young player, but Cochran has shown that she can put the ball in the back of the net for the cards. Position out left here with Geigley ahead of her. As Florida State works through possession again, three wide. And Florida State just has not been able to find the piece to be able to break down this back line of Louisville. Louisville has been so strong defensively, just it's an all out effort defensively, and they have looked very good in, these, in this first half. And in that fracas a moment ago, Autumn Weeks doing battle with Leah Pace. Pace somewhere along the line took a knock to the mouth, but appears to be okay. Here's Autumn Weeks. Transferred over to Louisville from IUPUI. Louisville wins the throw. Olivia Garcia is going to come on here for Florida State at the end of this first half. Emma Kate Scroll also coming on for Louisville. Dudley and Nesbeth coming off. Maggie Tite, Titano coming on as well for FSU. Both teams kind of doing an overhaul of their attacking players to try to get some fresh legs out for these final few minutes, but then also give the starters a chance for a little extra break before the second half. And there's a takeaway by Cochran, but a good recovery from EY, almost given away there, but Louisville will have an attacking throw. Louisville slowly growing in this game, is beginning to see more time in their offensive half, and that's exactly what they need to, they need to see if they can lock it in this space, trap Florida State back in this area to keep possession in this part of the field. State still working through possession. Louisville turning the screws a little bit more here defensively. Bentley through the middle. Could be something developing here. Bentley trying to play in Geigley and scuffed it. But recycling possession again for the cards. Geigley again has the ball fall to her. Here's Cochran, and handling is going to be called on Louisville. 
bit of a delayed call there, but I think it was the right call. Ball bounced up and hit Guy Glee's hand. If it, if it didn't, though, I think uh, Molly Cochran was in a good position there to maybe demonstrate how she can hit the leather off the ball. <laughs> doing really well in the air as well defensively. The first halves of Louisville's games so far this season, very low scoring. The Cards, three first half goals, but their opponents only six so far this season through 12 games. Time report coming up here, talking about the Women's World Cup, just completed, gosh, two months ago now, but it feels like more recent than that. Plus first half highlights and stats, of course. The great thing about the Women's World Cup and how quality college soccer is here in the United States is you have players who played in the Women's World Cup coming back to the U.S. to play collegiate soccer, including a couple here tonight for Florida State. Michigini playing in three matches for Nigeria, and Jody Brown, of course, playing for Jamaica. What's truly fascinating is on this current Florida State team, there are 14 players right now who have played in some level with their respected country's national team. Whether it is the full team, the U23, the under 20, whatever it might be, 14 current players have national team experience. That is fantastic. And Jody Brown starting all four of the games that she played in as Jamaica had a historic performance in the World Cup, Nigeria too, or at least matching its previously historic performances as everybody just seems to be getting better across the women's game and that has made the World Cups even more competitive in the last couple go-arounds. Well, I think there's more development in the women's game. I think there's now more time, more money being invested in women's soccer at a young age. Kids now have so many opportunities that a lot of the greats in the past did not have, and it's just so exciting to see the game grow and expand to the level that it, that it is. And talk about just right here in Louisville, you have a powerful travel scene already, and then the Racing Louisville Academy coming to town with U7 all the way up to U19, a bunch of these players on both teams playing in the USLW League, which connects collegiate players with the pro ranks. It's the pre-professional circuit is what it's called. And then of course you have NWSL teams. Ironically, the Orlando Pride, the closest NWSL team to Tallahassee, are in town playing Louisville tomorrow night in the top league, in my opinion, in the world. Well, you'll also have the expansion of the USLW League. It's yeah. gonna grow even more next season and be even more of a factor, so. I mean, pretty cool stuff. A couple of Louisville players playing on the racing W League team. I know Addie Chester playing up in Indianapolis with Indy 11. So it's a, it's a nice spread and lots of opportunities for soccer players of all ages as Louisville trying to finish out this first half. Defensively, Florida State in possession, scoreless to the final 60 seconds of this first half. Cards remain compact as Autumn Weeks trying to keep the ball for Louisville, does well to win it back and put it away. A bit of a pinball moment here in this game. As Cochran trying to navigate her way through traffic.
foul called just inside the midfield circle. Maggie Titano, the culprit. Louisville trying to play something forward, and that's where we're going to leave things. Casey Whitfield, nothing, nothing at halftime. Your thoughts on what we just saw? No, I mean, I think if you're Louisville, you have to be extremely pleased with. The referee tonight, Leland Grant, starting to have his nerves tested a little bit here as Florida State taking a little bit too long for his taste to get back on the field. But nevertheless, we're underway here in Louisville. As the Cardinals here in the second half, going left to right on your screen, as I mentioned, wearing the pink jerseys with the black slash across the front. And the foul there on Geyser coming in a little too hot. On Lauren Flynn. I haven't had a chance to talk a ton about Flynn tonight. The senior from Virginia was a is a member of the under 23 U.S. Youth National Team, making her 63rd career start and 57th consecutive start for the Seminoles. A key piece for Brian Penske's team. this season the conversation has never been about the defense the defense has done its job the cards have struggled a bit scoring expected goals per game one and a half actual goals per game 0.75 so exactly 50 percent of what they're hoping to get and what they've generated really in terms of chances 59 shots in the last five games only 18 on target and cards trying to change that chemistry tonight As they force a clearance there, Haley Howard applying the pressure for the cards. And this is where Louisville needs to see if they can lock it in, see if they can use their press, use that pressure they've been putting Florida State's back line under to see if they can get a nice look on target to start this second half. There's Morgan Bentley on the ball. Out wide to the left-hand side to Raven Alexander. Ellsworth and shifting out here to Betsy Huckabee and Huckabee trying to track back, unable to get to it. Somewhat of a reconfigured back line for Louisville without Lizzie Sexton. Sexton a standout fullback for the Cards. Is that with an injury? Had been a regular starter. That's where the flexibility of a Lucy Roberts helps because Roberts can shift inside to that center back position as Cherry playing it back to Floyd. Just ultimately ends up in a clearance for the cards. And Florida State still having a lot of difficulty with this defensive shape of Louisville. They're struggling with trying to find those players in the middle of the field because Louisville has done such a good job of compressing the middle of the field, making it difficult to play through. And that's where those players in the middle of the field need to have a little bit more movement. Down on this left side, giving chase is Olsen. Flynn, Jody Brown, Elizabeth took a light touch and it ran long on her. Here's Addie Chester for Louisville. Chester, a ridiculous goal scorer in high school. Poked away there from Echeguini and back to Florida State. And that's where it comes down to valuing that possession that I talked that Louisville needs to do in this second half is when they are able to turn the ball over, can they connect a few more passes? Can they find a little bit of time and space to be able to relieve some of the pressure that they've been under defensively? Louisville 
won the last time they were here at Lynn Stadium, beat Pittsburgh 3 2. And we have had some exciting games. There's been a lot, we've talked about this before the broadcast, a lot of late goals in this college season. Louisville lost a heartbreaker to Miami with a goal coming basically at the buzzer. Florida State scoring a game winner, or excuse me, a game tying goal against UNC as time expired. It just feels like a lot of late goals as time expires in these games this year. You know, there's no leaving early in matches anymore. You gotta <laughs> make sure you stay for all of it. Hiscock, Jennings, and Geigley scoring for Louisville in that 3-2 win over Pittsburgh last time we played here at home. And they we're definitely the team in control and at Miami, too. Outshot them 13-5. There's a takeaway from Geyser. Chased by Flynn, and Geyser trying to take the early shot there. An easy read for Roquet. It's not a bad idea to try to to chip Roquet there in that situation, especially when you have two defenders closing in on you. It's just a very, very difficult shot to be able to accomplish, and you have to hit it just about perfectly. And I feel like Roquet was aware enough to be able to drop back and cover it, but not a bad look. Good pressure from Geyser there to win that ball. Fiona Geyser brought over in the offseason. Freshman from Germany. You mentioned through the Bayern Munich system, one of the powers in Europe. Karen Ferguson Day is hoping that Geyser and Victoria Wick, a signing from Denmark, could come in and help spark this offense. Still young, of course, joining Addy Chester, Emerson Jennings, you see on your screen a moment ago. Floyd will restart this for Louisville. The service to try to release Jordan Dudley just has not been there so far for Florida State. They haven't been able to find her or get her on the ball enough to, for her to be able to showcase her talent, her creativity. Foul is whistled here on Nesbeth, much to the frustration of Florida State. A senior from Bermuda, very unhappy with that call, and Leland Grant is going to bring her back over here to have a conversation with her. She uh, let her opinion be known on that one. She was not happy with that call whatsoever. I think this is a good talking to opportunity. I don't think it's a yellow card. I think just a good conversation. Here we're going to get another look at that foul. And I think she's claiming that she got the ball. And she might have a fair argument there. But she had to go through Chester a little bit to get it. And I think that's the reason for the call. I could see that one going either way, being a no call. Uh, but I do think there was some contact. Restart here for Louisville. Back post looking for maybe Jennings, but it was a bit long for anybody. As Roque coolly collects it. Bit of a wasted opportunity there. I think the cards have to do better on those set pieces so they can try to get some looks on targets. Those are free opportunities for you to be able to whip a ball into the box and have a player run onto it. And there, nobody was anywhere close to being on the end of it. Tied up their win, almost had Chester in her pocket there. Instead, Olsen is trying to chase down this left flank. And Floyd was the first one to it. And I just think as this game ticks on and on, Louisville surely will gain more and more confidence against this number two Florida State Seminole squad. FSU number three in the RPI rankings coming into this game. Oh 
Bentley. Right to Betsy Huckabee, won a state championship here in Kentucky as a high school star. I think the cards are able to get a result out of this one, whether it's a win or a tie. That's going to be a really big statement on their resume for building for postseason play, for looking at how their season has gone so far. It's going to be that highlight moment for them if they're able to get something out of this matchup. A battle to be one of the six teams at the ACC tournament, knowing what this league is. And three of those teams right now are in the top 11 in the country. It's a fierce, fierce battle. Every point matters. Here comes Huff through the middle, unlocking down this left side. This is Dudley. Dudley on the right foot squares it. It was Echeguini took a spill. Grant says play on. Referee didn't even look like he was thinking about it. This is Dudley, right-footed strike, and it's always going to be high on Floyd's goal. And here, as we get another look at it, it's a late pass, but I don't think there's enough contact for there to be a penalty. Was there some contact? Yeah, a little bit. But I also think Echeguini was going down already with it before the contact. Yeah, it certainly looked like she was already in the process of her momentum carrying her forward before the contact was even made. But Brian Penske not happy with that and getting a, a yellow card for arguing with the officials. You got a sense Florida State getting a little bit frustrated with how this match is going because they haven't been able to really be as strong offensively as they have been in previous matches. And as time goes on, that gets really, really frustrating when you can't do what you are so good at, which is score goals. So you got to imagine as this game stays level, not only is Louisville's confidence going to build, but the frustration level in Florida State is going to build as well, too. FSU broke in at the hour mark. And there's no call there in the area. Broke through at the hour mark against Miami in what was eventually a 2 0 win. Both goals coming from Dudley. Scored in the 60th minute and again in the 87th to win that game. Now, this game is not going to be over until that final whistle blows. And like you've talked about earlier, we've seen that in several matchups for both of these teams. Those late goals, those deciding goals at the ends of matches, that you have to make sure you are locked in for the full 90 minutes. And talk about. The impact of the ACC on pro soccer. There's Jody Brown on this left side. We talk about Miami, of course. Assistant coach for Racing Louisville, Bev Yanez went to Miami. Fallon Tullis Joyce, a goalkeeper now with Manchester United, formerly in the NWSL, went to Miami. I mean, it's just a long list as the ball skipped into the area. And Aaron Floyd is quickly to it. Nice little cheeky scoop pass over the top, but Floyd has been so locked in. She doesn't even allow that one to come through. It's a good little scoop, and Aaron Floyd just off her line so quickly before Olsen even has a chance. And I like the little look back <laughs> at her there, the, the death glare. I, I like that. It's aggressive. Flynn giving chase. Chester trying to cut her off. Jody Brown through the right side. This is Dudley. Met out there by Ellsworth. Brown again. Brown's trying to get it back on that right foot. Just lost possession of it. Louisville happy to just clear it. There's been a couple times where Florida State has just had a bit of a missed touch when they get into the final third, missing the cutback, missing the ball there, and a lot of that is due to the weather. The ball's very slick. Well, skipped in there and cleared at the last second for a corner by Ellsworth. Maddie Ellsworth 
Solid as usual defensively. Taylor Huff trotting over to take this corner. Be a right footed delivery from Huff as the six yard box gets awfully crowded. Hoff on the delivery. Knocked down. And Addie Chester will be the first one to it for Louisville, although I'm not sure where she was looking there because she kind of passed it to EY. And Hoff on the outside, cut off by Jennings, who has been really good. Great defending there by Jennings. Chester pestering Nesbeth. This is Hoff. Left touch line. Van Zenten, who was the goal scorer as time expired to tie UNC 3 3 in a highly anticipated matchup between numbers one and three. And some substitutions coming for Louisville. Geigley is on along with Emma Hiscock and Savina Zamberini. Here we're going to get another look at that defensive effort from the Cards. Look at that defending from Emerson Jennings. Just does so well to position her body between the attacking player and the ball and win that. It's perfect textbook defending right there. This is Nesbeth driving through the middle. He's trying to find Huff or Olsen and ended up splitting the two as Huckabee is over there to claim it. Huckabee from Crestwood, Kentucky, just north of Louisville, right outside the county line. And that's a heavy challenge in on Geigley, but the play on issued by the referee. Raven Alexander, it may have looked worse than it actually was as Geigley hopped right back up. Yeah, I think it was a pretty solid slide tackle. I think she timed it beautifully, was just able to make the perfect contact. This is Brown through the middle now at Cicchini. So dangerous in space if she gets it. And on the left, this is Van Zant Zanten, the freshman. Just can't get over this, Casey, that Mimi Van Zanten, freshman here for Florida State, scores her first collegiate goal to tie the game at UNC 3-3 <laughs> in numbers one versus three as time expires. What a great way to score your first right. collegiate goal. Right, what a goal. great core memory to have there because you never forget the first goal that you score. And that one, I don't think she will ever forget it as being maybe one of the best goals that she has or most impactful goals that she has in, in her college career. Morgan Bentley doing a good job there. Bentley a track star in addition to being a soccer player. Helping Louisville out of a little bit of a jam. We have played now north of an hour of soccer. 10 shots between the two teams, 7-3 in favor of Florida State. Seven corners for the Seminoles, two for Louisville, but still scoreless. Nice communication there for a second between Cherry and Roberts. Now the cards may be a chance to get something going. It was snuffed out though by Floyd, or Flynn, excuse me. Here's Zamberini driving forward, pestered by Nesbeth. Geigley. Physical exchange there between Hoff and Geigley, but Florida State gets it back. Again, Zamberini in the right place at the right time. Here's Geigley. Now Geyser. 
Shifts it back out to Geigley along the right and it's poked away by Van Zanten. Good stuff here from Louisville the last so few minutes. You can see the confidence just growing in this team as they begin to ease into this final portion of the match. They look more confident on the ball. They're more aggressive in their challenge in Florida State. You just sense the frustration. Their passes haven't been as sharp as they need to be in the final third. There's a lot of players standing and watching offensively, which if, I, if it were me, I'd be very disappointed. My teammates were standing their hands on hips at some point with some of the players out there, just waiting for the ball to come to them, being very reactive instead of proactive. And if they, if they want to win this game, they're going to be a little more proactive off the ball as we have a Nice set piece here for the cards to see if they can get that go-ahead goal. And here it comes, Annie Chester. Or excuse me, no, it's Betsy Huckabee over to take the corner for the cards. Right-footed delivery coming for Louisville. Everybody in the box for Florida State. It falls to Geigley. And there's so many bodies in front of the frame, it's going to be hard to get much through. Zamborini trying to shuffle it back through, and that's going to run long to Roquet. But what a set piece opportunity there for the cards. A good ball to the back post. They're able to get maybe somewhat of a, a look. Uh, just it's difficult when there's that many people. I think Geigley maybe should have tried to take it one time and hope for some sort of deflection to go her way instead of trying to take that touch in for a, for a service. But regardless, it's, it's a good attack for the cards. Florida State just <laughs> studying the field here, trying to figure out a way to finally break through against Louisville. Elizabeth <laughs> pestered a little bit there by Cochran. And Lucy Roberts plays a dangerous pass back and Dudley pounces on it. Dudley down this left flank. So dangerous in space, poked away by Cherry. Jody Brown had a look at it and sliding in is Bentley and last ditch challenge there for Louisville, a huge one. Out to the right now, this is Huff. Tries to flip it in and Floyd had a hard time with it and Florida State scores. After all that effort defensively, a knuckleball in caught Floyd off guard and Florida State is gonna take the lead here with 23 minutes and change to go. We talked about how the weather can be a factor. It's a nice ball in and Floyd looks like she has it, but it just almost gets hung up in the air a little bit. She mistimes it and between the spin on the ball and the ball being wet, just isn't able to make the contact there with her fist. And it just trickles in the back of the net. A really unfortunate goal for Floyd to give up there. But Florida State's just been knocking at the door this entire half. and finally get that go-ahead goal. It'll be interesting to see how the, the pace of this game shifts. Does Louisville step out of their defensive shape a little bit to see if they can get the equalizer? Or kind of what is going to be the game plan now? That's goal number three of the season for Taylor Hoff. She scored the game winner against Texas A&M earlier this year, the equalizer at UNC. Now 18 career goals for Huff. the ways to fall behind in this one. I know Louisville will be pretty frustrated that that's the way it happens and it's a shame for Floyd. She's played really well tonight. We'll see if her teammates can pick her up. It's a long ball down from Flynn and Jody Brown is the first one to it. Brown has some numbers joining her. This is Pace, 
Back to Brown. Right-footed strike right at Floyd. And a comfortable save. Yeah, and I think that's one that uh, Brown's going to want back. She didn't really make good contact on it and didn't get the, the right angle on the ball. Louisville, again, doing a good job of eliminating the angles, cutting down the clean looks. There's about three defenders in front of her for that shot. Uh, but Florida State not backing down. Maria Alagoa coming back on the junior from Portugal. Viseu, Portugal. She will replace Dudley. And slipping just before she can take off as Emma Hiscock. She almost was able to claim that loose ball, the errant pass. But again, the weather perhaps a factor in that moment. Louisville trying to find something here. As Autumn Weeks on that far side wins the throw. She's trying to call her teammates over to come and support her because she's kind of out on an island and doesn't really have many options to be able to play through. This is Cochran. Does well to get the cross in. Guy Glee almost fell to Bentley. And Florida State happy to settle back into possession. And at some point, Louisville's going to have to push a little bit higher to start applying some pressure if they want to get an equalizer in this match. They're going to have to get a little bit uncomfortable out of that defensive shape that they've just lived in for most of this game. No one there from Roberts. Here's Zamberini. She has Geigley ahead of her. Not a ton of numbers. Tries to shift it out wide. This is Autumn Weeks. Weeks trying to cross it in and scuffed it. There's Roberts, the USF transfer. Here's Huckabee. Good defensive effort there from Huff. The way that goal is officially ruled is Taylor Huff, the goal scorer, and Mimi Van Zanten getting the assist. Yeah, it wouldn't go down as an own goal because it was a look on target. So be, if it had been off target and it would have hit off Floyd and then gone in the back of the net, then it would have been considered an own goal. But because it was on target, it will be credited to Huff. So Van Zetten with a chance to have a game tying first goal and a game winning first assist as a freshman for Florida State. It's a huge weekend for Louisville sports, of course. Everybody in town talking about Saturday night's football game against Notre Dame. The sellout. It's going to be an exciting one. Cardinal Stadium, I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than that. Both teams in the national rankings. Louisville 5-0 under new coach Jeff Braun. As two more substitutions come on for Louisville. Three for Florida State is the Louisville Athletics Director, Josh Hurd, in the house tonight. Cherry and Bentley checking out here for a moment for Louisville. 
along with Brown, Nesbeth, and Huff for Florida State. Titano, Zippe, Farkas on for Florida State and Scroll, Hadley, Snyder on for Louisville. Snyder making her first appearance tonight. Florida State gets the turnover. This is Pace through the middle. Now Olsen. Now Flynn. Florida State now has the luxury to be a little bit more complacent with passing it around the back and being more patient going forward because they do have the 1-0 lead, so they're able to be a little more patient in their attack and not trying to get the go-ahead goal. I would like to see the cards maybe a little bit more aggressive defensively to try to turn them over to see if they can get the equalizer instead of just kind of sitting in and allowing Florida State to play around. Be on the throw here for Louisville. And Cochran working on this right side. And you do think, as we've watched Louisville through the course of this year, they do have a nice group of young players. Talk about Huckabee and Cochran, but also, of course, Addie Chester, Lizzie Sexton, Floyd. I mean, it's a nice group of freshmen and sophomores, and they're getting this experience. You kind of think in the long run it'll help to have played some of these really good teams and play them as well as they have. 100%, and then to think about the goal production of the 11 goals that they've scored, six of them have been from those underclassmen, and so they're making an impact, they're having, they're seeing strides in this, they're making improvements, and so you gotta imagine, give it a year or two for these players to continue to develop. The cards are gonna look really, really strong. Florida State in no hurry. And Louisville now starting to try to ratchet up the pressure. Just have to be careful as the break opportunities create themselves. Hiscock out to the left side. Hadley Snyder unable to get there in time as Florida State regroups. Louisville next up for them, a home game against Syracuse. Casey and I will be back with you on Sunday. A 1 p.m. matchup in that one as Florida State beat Syracuse 3-2 back on September 21st. And if you're Louisville, you're going into that game, you're thinking that's a chance to add to our ACC win total. It's a winnable game at home for the Cards. Absolutely, it's an opportunity for them to get that win, begin to build their way through the ACC table to see if they can maybe squeak out a chance to, to make the tournament. Wilson trying to square it there, and it was cut off by Louisville. Nice little back heel there from Ronnie White, and in for the shot, and it sneaks through! Florida State! Getting goal number two through Maria Alagoa. And a frustrating one for Louisville as it got through the legs of the defender. And it's a really nice through ball there to find Alagoa. Good composure on the ball to have that touch. And you thought that Lucy Roberts was going to be able to deflect that one away. But it looks like it just trickles right between her legs, just doesn't really get the timing of that tackle right and ends up in the back of the net. A good composed finish, though, from Alagoa. It's a tough one to concede for Louisville. They have played really well defensively and two goals that have kind of snuck through here. Alagoa now two goals tonight 
or excuse me, two goals this season. As the Knolls take a two nothing stranglehold on this game, just 13 and a half minutes to go. Alexander plays in Cochran. Good defending there from Van Zanten on this near side to knock it away. Now 21 of 28 goals this season for Florida State coming in the second half of games. They're such a good second half team to be, and they outscore their opponents significantly also in the second half. They're just very, very difficult to break down to beat. 21 to three this year in second yeah. halves. They've won 44 consecutive games against unranked opponents. It's dating all the way back to October 25th, 2018. So again, just talking about how difficult this Florida State team is to beat and break down. Christina Roque has not had a whole lot to do tonight, the goalkeeper for Florida State. She's got one save, faced three shots in total, one on frame. That's a good ball through on the left side and the offside flag is up though. There is more combination play now going forward for FSU, and that has really helped them be able to break down that defense to find those open pockets of space to be able to generate more attack going forward. Pace out to the right side now, EY. And Florida State able to just possess, take the air out of the ball. That time a long ball played out. It's looking once again for Maria Alagoa. Two more substitutions coming on for FSU. Olivia Garcia and Peyton Norse will be coming on for the Knowles. Norse will replace Van Zanten. And it appears that will require several changes in the shape for this Florida State team. Pace will shift out to the right back spot and EY back to this left back position. And Garcia didn't come on because of the exchange there and the other. Well, I think Van Zanten was down injured and so they were doing a little substitution. injury substitution yep. there. a little too physical on that one. Florida State back home on Sunday, hosting Boston College. Two schools with very similar colors. And then they play the big one left on their schedule, number 11, Notre Dame, on Thursday, October 12th. We showed you Louisville's schedule the rest of the way. But having to play back-to-back -back ones against Notre Dame and Florida State. There's no easy game and there's no easy path through the ACC. You just got to take it head on. And it's, it is such a difficult league because even if a team isn't ranked, that doesn't mean that they aren't a good team and it isn't going to be uh, a fight on the, on the pitch. Well, 
Olivia Garcia coming on for Olsen. Presumably the last we'll see of Olsen tonight. Florida State has the ability now to, to maybe rest some of those starters, maybe get some extra minutes for players who haven't played as much this season, get them some more time on the field so they have a bit fresher legs going into Sunday because it is going to be a tough turnaround for them to have to travel back home to then have a little bit of tired legs to then have to regroup and play on, on Sunday. It is going to be a bit difficult. So the opportunity here to spread the playing time out amongst the players to limit the wear and tear on the bodies is always beneficial. Well, the good news is, Casey, it's not supposed to rain on Sunday. I think they'll Louisville. appreciate that. <laughs> Louisville will appreciate that because it's just been a constant downpour. Louisville, Syracuse. At least we didn't get any uh, delays today, but it'll be high 50s, low 60s when Louisville and Syracuse play on Sunday. Nice fall matchup there. Good October game. For Syracuse, that's warm. <laughs> yeah, it'll be senior day for the cards. We'll also have uh, some alumni in the, yes. the building as well. So a really big, fun matchup coming on Sunday for the cards. And we mentioned hoping to see hometown hero Amino, Amina Ekic come on back. Her teammate Jalen Howell at Racing Louisville joining us earlier tonight. A good time chatting with Jalen, the captain of the NWSL squad here in town. As the train rolling by here at Norfolk Southern. Saying hello to everybody who has stuck it out under the cover here at Lynn Stadium. For the weather being the way that it is, I, uh, there's quite a few fans out here to, to cheer on the cards and to watch some good soccer. Can't fault the home standing team's effort tonight. They have put in an excellent defensive shift and two just momentary lapses. Just really unfortunate goals, I think. Yeah, and, and to Florida State's credit, I mean, the, the pressure has been applied, but at the same time, even by their standards, they'll take the goals, they, you make your own luck, but at the same time, not the beauties that we're used to seeing in transition, Dudley, I mean, Dudley has just scored some fantastic goals this season. Echegini scoring one against Syracuse that is seared in my memory as well. Final six minutes of this one, Florida State in front two nothing against Louisville here in the Derby City, just a stone's throw away from Churchill Downs, home of the Kentucky Derby. Alagoa, the goal scorer for goal number two, trying to drive through the middle, is cut off. And the pace of this game has just slowed down significantly as Florida State has just been extremely comfortable moving the ball across their back line. Louisville's line of confrontation still pretty low, uh, just kind of still sitting and inviting Florida State to work the ball side to side. Floyd all the way off her line. Howard and Alexander pairing up there to put off Lily Farkas. it up. I think Farkas played in the match between Louisville and Michigan when she was with Michigan a few years ago. She did. She put in a half hour for the Wolverines in a 1-1 draw against Louisville back in 2021. 
One of the more recent matchups against a ranked opponent here at Lynn Stadium for the Cards. That was actually a pretty fun game. I don't know that if you was, remember that. I do remember that game. It was a really, it was a, it was a fun matchup. Nikki Hernandez scoring a screamer and Louisville ending up with the equalizer less than two minutes later. This set piece here would be a great opportunity for the cards to see if they can get some bodies forward, get some numbers into the box and see if they can put another shot on Roque. They haven't really had any looks on target or even on goal in this second half. So a good opportunity here is the clock is winding down to get another look on, on goal. Roberts scoops one up into the area, trying to find somebody dealt with by Florida State. Garcia, 1v1 with Roberts. And Roberts is going to get whistled for the foul, but just a little too handsy. Yeah, but really good work there by Garcia. Defenders hate when forwards run at them at pace on the dribble, and Garcia did exactly that, making it really difficult for Lucy Roberts. Roberts does well to contain her, but just gets a little bit too handsy there and is holding on to Olivia Garcia. Really nicely worked, though, from Garcia to earn this, this set-piece opportunity. Mentioned the start of this sports weekend here for the University of Louisville. They've got uh, a significant field hockey matchup tomorrow taking on Wake Forest on the ACC network. And then of course, the big one, at least for the football fans out there, um, Saturday against Notre Dame. We'll be back here on Sunday for Louisville and Syracuse. That's Florida State trying to put the finishing touches on what would be their ninth win of the season. Fourth in the ACC, a win that'll help them maintain their place tied atop the ACC standings. State still hungry for one more on the offside flag up on the far side. Some really aggressive play there. Players that maybe don't get as much playing time looking to see if they can earn more playing time through their, their effort and energy and maybe even getting an, another goal in this match, but really good effort from Florida State. Pitt beating Duke, by the way, and ACC play tonight, 2-1. About 10 minutes left in that one. Notre Dame beating Boston College as well. Another game that Florida State would have its eye on at the top of the standings. If both of these results hold, and it's looking like they will, Notre Dame and Florida State will still share the lead atop the standings. North Carolina not playing tonight. They would have a game in hand to catch back up to the other two. It'll just be the second loss this year at home for Louisville. And that is how things are gonna finish up here at Lynn Stadium, Florida State getting two bounces that they'll be happy with. A two nothing win, the goals through Alagoa and Huff. And they improve